welcome to the class and in this we are going to continue on with unit 5 and also continue on with demand that we started in the last class in this we're going to talk about determinants of demand so what are the factors that affect demand yes it's the own price of the commodity it is prices of other goods say say related goods like complementary goods and substitute goods and then tastes and preferences it can be income and it get, could be expectations when you're talking about it individual demand how many what are the factors that affect demand so learn it up like o tie o for own price o for other prices of goods o t i e taste and preference for t i is income and e is expectations so i want you to just go through this while i just explain each one of this so uh, so generally as we see the demand for a good by an individual consumer depends upon such things for example own price of the good generally with such some exceptions the demand for a good rises with a fall in price and falls with the rise in price of the good this inverse relation between price and demand this is the inverse relation between price and demand for any normal good. So we will be doing normal good and inferior goods later on. So in that we'll make a distinction. But right now, for now, just remember that own price of the good. Then let's talk about prices of other goods, other goods prices. So what are these there are certain goods that are related. So we can talk about for related goods, we have what is known as substitute goods. We talk about complementary goods and unrelated goods. So let's take the effect of change in price of a substitute good. Let, let's take an, the example, say two goods are substitutes. What are substitute goods? Okay. So two goods are substitutes or can be called substitutes if one can be easily used in place of the other. They are also sometimes called competitive goods because they compete with each other for demand in the market. Suppose let's take Pepsi and Coke. So let's examine the change in demand for Pepsi on account of change in the price of coke suppose the price of coke falls now what is the li what is likely to happen to the demand for pepsi now since the relative price of coke is now lower the consumer is likely to consume more coke in place of pepsi so the demand for pepsi is likely to fall as such with a fall in the price of a substitute, that is Coke, the demand for the given good, that is Pepsi, falls. Again, with the rise in the price of a substitute, the demand for a given good rises. So, there is a positive relation between the price of a substitute and the demand for a given good. If we show it on one diagram, where on the y-axis we take price of Pepsi and on the x-axis we take the uh, the demand for coke now we let's talk about complementary goods now what is the effect of changes in the price of a complementary good two goods are complementary to each other when they are used jointly they also call joint goods for example let's take uh, say petrol and car suppose if the price of petrol rises what is likely to happen for the demand for cars so rise in the price of petrol reduces demand for cars since petrol is used in cars the demand for car is also likely to fall so this is 
this is what we can talk about complementary goods so there is an inverse relation between the price of complementary good and the demand for the given good for example let's on the y axis let's take prices of petrol and on the x axis let's take demand for cars and of course there are something known as unrelated goods so where if a good is neither a substitute good nor a complementary of the given good uh, it is categorized as unrelated good for for example now let's take say price of petrol and tea they are or let's take petrol and tea they are unrelated goods a change in the price of petrol has no direct uh, effect on the demand for tea for example so now we we finish with o oh, let's take tea now what is tea tastes and preferences of the consumer so this is the basic factor behind the demand for a good by an individual consumer unless the consumer has a taste for good he is not likely to buy that good howsoever cheap it is and howsoever rich is the consumer you will normally find that when fashions change the demand for old fashioned goods declines very sharply while the demand for latest fashion goods rises rises pretty sharply so with the changes in taste and preferences demand also changes now let's take income now regarding income what happens is for example for studying the influence of uh, income on demand a distinction is made between again normal good and inferior good the distinction is not based on the quality of the good but on the basis of likings and disliking of the good that develops with change in income levels consumer who likes a good when his income was low may not uh like the same good when his income is high for example at low income level a consumer buys coarse cloth because he cannot afford say fine cloth and at low income coarse cloth is a perfectly normal good for him but when his income rises the consumer may reduce or give up the consumption of the coarse cloth and instead buy fine cloth now higher income level coarse cloth becomes an inferior good so we have given the above example to show that no good is inferior at all times and for all it is the income level that makes a good inferior for an individual a good may be inferior for a consumer with high income but at the same time it is quite normal for the consumer with low income so whether a good is inferior or normal does not depend on the quality or the utility content of the good but on the income level of the consumer so with this background we can now conveniently define normal goods and inferior goods so a normal good what is that a good